So our first news today, Iranian girl 13 beheaded by father and reported honor killing in Talesh, Iran. A 13-year-old Iranian girl was beheaded in her sleep by her father on Thursday, May 21st. The victim, uh, Romina Ashrafi, uh, had run away from home following her father's opposition to her marrying a 35-year-old man she had, quote-unquote, fallen in love with. Ashrafi was handed over to her father despite her repeated warnings that she would be in danger. After being found and returned home by the police, Ashrafi's father killed her in her sleep using a sickle. Yeah, another very sharp one as well, which might have, it means it was very, very slow and play, painful death. Um, he, I think he locked the door so that the mom can't get in. And the mom was like, not like trying to get in. Oh we can try to figure out what is happening, and he was like, "So father killed his daughter because," and he lied about it. He was like, "If you come home, um, you know, is all is forgiven, blah blah blah." But he was lying. He was just wanted the daughter to come home so he could kill her. Mm-hmm. By the way, so just to be, I'll ask you guys what you guys think about this because if there was a Muslim here. Uh, he or she might would might say something like this, like, okay, yeah, this is horrible. Nobody can deny that. What does this got to do with Islam? What do you guys would say to that? Oh, Abdullah Samir is here. Hey, Abdullah. That's awesome. So, so Your friendly neighborhood ex-Muslim. <laughs> yeah. So actually, Abdullah on Facebook is saying that honor killing is in... It, is in many are in many cultures, right? So, but is it a cultural thing or is it an Islamic thing? What do you guys think? I have an, my answer to this, but what do you guys think? Well, I was going to say that sometimes it's hard to decouple religion and culture, particularly if the culture is so, or the religion is so pervasive, rather, and encompasses everything in the culture. So, I mean, yes, it, honor killings are in other cultures, therefore they're potentially other religions, but I don't think that it's all one thing sometimes, particularly if they're using specific religious ex- texts as, you know, justification or they are saying well this is against our god or our you know so it's hard to decouple i mean it's definitely a cultural phenomenon worldwide but again you know how do you separate it from that so the two sides the so some people so a muslim might might say this is yeah yeah i agree that culture and religion can sometimes cannot be separated but this is purely a cultural thing because there's nothing in Islam that says this is okay, okay? There's no Quranic verse or Hadith that says like, oh yeah, if your daughter is like, first of all, um, and also in this situation, it's not even like the girl didn't, oh yeah, I'm not gonna get into too much detail, but there's nothing that says the father is allowed to kill their uh, daughter if they do something un-Islamic. There is no, there's not, in fact, there's, it's a sin in Islam to do something like that. So that's what a Muslim would say. But then counter to that, uh, somebody might say like, okay, if this is not an Islamic thing, why is it happening more widely in Islamic communities way much, way more than in non-Islamic communities? Like honor killing seems to be, a, you know, way more common among Muslims. So what do you guys think? Um, I think it's really complicated. I think I think I ahead, think it it does stem from the religions, like the purity of women and such concepts exist in the religions, and to maintain those, they tend to go with honor killings because I mean they right. believe that a woman who is not pure anymore, something like that, is not wor- worthy of living. So. Right. So, I, yeah, exactly. So what the way it works that I think you can blame Islam for this n- indirectly, right? So there are certain attitudes that uh, certain cultural, um, you know, norms that 
even if there is no doctrine for it, like there's no scripture that supports it, the attitudes that Islam promotes end up resulting in those kind of behavior and attitudes, right? Um, for example, in, like there's nothing, we could compare it to the Bible and Christianity. There's nothing in the Bible that says priests should are allowed, it's okay for you to molest children. There's nothing in Christianity that promotes that. But the environment that Christianity promotes, the environment where you allow some people to have authority, uh, undeserved authority and trust, um, and for people to be able to, you know, give their children um, to to these, un, you know, to these undeserved authority, and also uh, the ideas that people have about sin and all sins being equal and being able to wash yourself clean from all your sins just by asking forgiveness from the world. All these in, com in combination might result in an environment where child molestation is more common, per adjusted per capita in a Christian environment, even if there is no direct um, scripture promoting it. So in a similar way, Islam promoting purity culture, promoting honor culture, um, promotes a certain types of attitude that makes these kind of, you know, encourages these the type of feeling people have the the the, amount, the right men think they have over women the amount of damage they think they have um you know dishonor they have thought, they feel towards themselves and their family from a result of a, a event like this all of these are encouraged indirectly by islam even if there is no direct scripture in islam promoting it so i still do think it is Islam. Uh, wait, Abdullah is saying something. Ab we have like some really good commentary from Abdullah here, so we should take it. Abdullah is an ex. By the way, if you guys don't know Abdullah Samir, he's an ex-Muslim with an amazing YouTube channel. Go check him out. He covers these topics, so that we should take advantage of having a celebrity in our live chat. For real. <laughs> um, so he's actually giving us a hadith. Um, he will okay. So he's actually, actually wait. So the hadith is saying that Muhammad said there is no Muslim who has two daughters and takes good care of them, but that he will enter the garden. Okay, so I mean, I I I think Abdullah knows that the hadith is there's contradictory hadith for and against many things in Islam, right? So. But yeah, he's showing, he's giving us a hadith that might actually suggest that fathers should be very good to their daughters, right? So, and again, this is not coming from a Muslim, okay? This is coming from an anti Islam, ex Muslim atheist. So, but I agree that this, I mean, that's what I pointed out. In Islam, this is, this action is definitely considered a sin, but that doesn't mean Islam is blameless. Um, yeah, there was a little bit more information I wanted to provide about this case. So, just for clarity, I saw conflicting information on what her age was. Some reports said she was 13, some said 14. And then the, there was also varying information on the age of the man so um, that she wanted to run away with. So, some reports said that he was as young as 29. Others said that he was as old as 35. Um, and yeah. after killing his daughter, the dad went straight to the police station like with the murder weapon in his hand and confessed to them like right then and there. So, I'm under the impression that he is in custody. Um, yeah. I was going to make a comment to piggyback on what you said, Susanna. Um, apparently, um, people are outraged about this in Iran, a number of people, and even um, Hassan Rouhani said but, something about it on Twitter. Bring it a bit lower. Oh, sorry. Uh, even yeah. Hassan Rouhani was saying that he expressed his regrets and he asked for this plea speedy passage of anti-violence bills so i believe that he probably is and then it says that he's likely to face three to ten years in mm. prison but right. um that's still I mean, not very much for 
murdering yeah, your killing. daughter. And they were saying, like in the in the Haaretz, Haaretz article that I read, lower they, microphone. Lower, sorry. Lower, uh, in the yeah. Haaretz article, they were saying that um, he had to repeatedly saw because the sickle was. Oh my god! Yeah, that it took him a long, long time. It wasn't a quick thing. So here's something that you could directly blame Islam for. Um, not like the other ones. I, the honor killing is indirect, but what you could directly blame Islam for the punishment would have been because he's a father and he has a right over his daughter. That will be taken into account, and his punishment would be significantly less. You, you know, it's like as if it's it's his own property. Like the crime is mostly against the mother because, but not. But if it was someone else's daughter, this the, the punishment would be. I think it would be death in Iran. I'm not sure about this, but if you just go kill someone else's daughter, the punishment probably might, you know, might have been death. But oh, it's your daughter. Oh, okay, just three years of prison, I guess. Yeah, um, like my preliminary research was um, basically echo echoing that. Um, Amnesty International called for Iran to amend Article Three Zero One of the Penal Code because um, that article reduces the punitive measures for fathers involved in honor killings. Right. Um, I want to also mention the pay rats that ARN is mentioning because, yeah, this is something uh, this whole uh, idea of pay rats in Islam is basically the honor, like, I don't know how to translate it accurately, but this whole idea of, like, oh my god, everything is, like, the whole universe is now my world has collapsed in because my daughter talked to a man or something like that. I mean, this is a 13 year. So this is like, not okay as well, but it's not like, um, but these, these people treated like nothing impure, um, anything impure that happens to any female members of your family. It, it's worse than death. Like you have to somehow restore the, uh, the family's honor to be clear, by the way, uh, this, the, there doesn't seem to have been any relationship between this girl and there any sexual relationship between this girl and the man. Like they were apparently just planning to go get married, run away with each other. Like man, the man wasn't like, I mean, it's still, you know, screwed up because marrying a 13 year old doesn't make sense. Right. But, um, but he wasn't, he wasn't molesting her or anything like that. Anyways, I don't know where we're getting with, um, Abdullah is keep, keep giving us hadiths, and Abdullah is saying another hadith is saying from that Muhammad judged the son in is to suffer relationship for killing his father, but the father is not to suffer the relationship for killing his son. Um, Retaliation. What? Oh, the message: judge the son is not to suffer the. Re oh, re Oh, retaliation, sorry. Retaliation for killing his father, but the father is not to suffer retaliation for killing his Oh, sorry, yeah, I, I don't know how why I read that like that. Yeah, okay, so wait, does this hadith suggest that it's okay for a father to kill his own son? Holy shit, is that what I'm reading? Is that is that what it means? Am I reading this right? Rivka, Susanna? Yeah, apparently, apparently that's suffer what it says. Like, if a father for kills killing his, son, his father. So, so no retaliation. If a son if a, if a son kills his father, he will suffer retaliation. But if the father kills his son, he is not to suffer any retaliation. Holy shit! That means that. that you can just kill your son and get away with it. That's that's fucked yeah. up. Yeah, that is fucked up. There's so much of that in the Old Testament too, and there's a lot of kill you know laws in some of Leviticus about you know punishment for women and men for doing specific things is death so i mean yep. it's it's kind of an abrahamic thing you know this, not just islam but all three of them not not just the abrahamic even in hinduism there are many things which result in death as punishment just to be clear i don't think like the, even even when there is direct i don't think the way it works is that the father is like, oh, I'm so angry with my daughter. Let me go check my Islamic studies hadith to see if I can, what can I do or not? You know what I mean? I don't think it works directly like, oh, scripture. Oh, I'm allowed to do this. Okay, I'm going to do it. It's more about there's certain ideas in the scripture 
which it results in certain types of attitudes in the in the in the culture and the society and over years those types of feeling gets promoted and your understanding of what's okay and what's unacceptable you get brainwashed by that in you know being raised in a society like that and then you see something like that happen and because of the attitudes that you grew up with you get you know you feel like you have to do something or you feel like you've been damaged in a certain a very you know and you need to restore something it's not like oh um, every most muslims don't go like oh there's something happened let me go check up my uh, my hadith studies to see what i'm supposed to do it doesn't work like that i mean most of these most muslims have never read the quran let alone the hadith you know i could make up random shit up I and mean, tell muslims oh this is hadith and they will they will believe me i mean i could even do that with the quran let alone hadith no i i don't know i i haven't met a single muslim outside of the you know internet that has ever touched the hadith book like in, my entire life living in an islamic country i have never met actually maybe in school my islamic teachers have but never met a single person after 20 years living in iran that has ever ever read open the hadith book to see what's written in it Anyways, okay. Oh yeah, Abdullah is saying that's a very good point, Armin. See, if Abdullah says that, then I'm doing very good. <laughs> News. Thank you for joining us. Subscribe to our channel. Hit the bell thingy. If you haven't, I don't know why. What has? What's holding you back? Okay. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, why haven't you subscribed to our channel? Explain that to us, please. Like bell <laughs> and also. If you if you're not getting notifications and stuff because YouTube is not telling people that we have shows because YouTube is like oh this person told us that they want to get your shows right they want to get your videos but nah you we think is no and oh like oh they also hit the bell button but nah you guys are too controversial we want to show them mainstream stuff we want to show them CNN or cat videos or whatever. But even there are people are like, no, we want to see Atheist Republic. And YouTube is like, no, nah, we don't think you want this. They're like, no, please show it to us. We say to you, we want to see Atheist Republic. And YouTube is like, no, we think we know what's better for you than you yourself. So to solve that, link, there's a link in the description, uh, which is to our newsletter. So hopefully some of our, we could email it to you. So hopefully you get some of our content that way. Okay. So yeah subscribe to our newsletter as well and share share our videos because you know we do get demonetized that's an obvious on every one of our videos so f that but we don't care about that anymore <laughs> but we also get deprioritized and that's even more damaging to us deprioritize what does that mean that means we're not we don't show up on the suggested you know videos on the right and all that you know on the on people's home pages and that's how channels grow unfortunately we can't grow so we need you guys to share our videos 